friends, hello, my name is Nathan. I work for Pape Machinery Ag and Turf here in Roseburg, Oregon. And I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce myself. I'm relatively new to agriculture. I spent my previous career pursuing um, aviation as a pilot and a mechanic. And uh, that ironically led me to agriculture. So come with us as we have some conversations and hopefully bring some value to you all on the Pape Machinery Toolkit. Hello friends, welcome back to Pape Machinery Toolkit. My name's Nathan. Today I want to talk about safety considerations for owning and operating compact tractors. The discussion we'll have today will apply to other tractors and, and kind of applies to equipment and vehicles in general, but wanted to bring up a few specific um, considerations that have been taught to me and I've thought through being a, a tractor owner and farmer uh, wanted to share with you. The first thing is when you're approaching a tractor for the day, uh, do a walk around. Uh, folks in the aviation community always do a pre-flight check. They walk around the airplane looking for leaks, looking for anything abnormal, tire pressures. Why not do it with your tractor? As you're approaching the tractor, again, look for leaks, um, look for anything unusual, out of place. Oftentimes, you're the at least in my family, I'm the one using the tractor all the time, but sometimes when someone else gets on it, they leave it in a different condition, or maybe they're not, um, they're a little rougher with the machine. I've actually found pieces loose and missing on my tractor just from doing a walk around. Uh, the next thing that makes a lot of sense is once you're up on the machine, look before you go, okay? Uh, always get in the habit of before you move the machine, do a 360 glance, look all the way around and take a look, especially when you're backing up. Uh, we're used to being in cars and we have kind of a set um, field of vision and a, um, a sight picture. When you're on your tractor, you're up, there's blind spots that maybe you're not as, as familiar with. So uh, especially when backing up, but in general, look around. And hopefully that'll cue you to do a few things that I often forget, which is lift the bucket. I usually remember that part, but sometimes I forget to lift whatever's in the back. Uh, so take a look around before you go. This is especially, especially important if you've got small children or animals. Uh, there's tragic stories of, of, of tractors injuring people and um, always look back, okay? Just get in that habit. When you're a new tractor owner, establish some habits from the get-go that you just do every time that become rote memory. And pretty soon it'll be, it'll be second nature and um, you won't have to intentionally reinforce those habits, they'll just be there. But I'd encourage you to think about those habits. Next, uh, when you're operating the machine, you're driving around, let's say you're mowing. Um, you're, you're, you're running a flail mower on the back, you're mowing blackberries because it's Oregon. And um, oftentimes in that scenario, you're backing up. It's hard to know what's in those berries. Uh, you can really damage your equipment or worst case scenario, uh, you can even tip the tractor over. So park the tractor, hop off. I keep a, a, some hand tools on my tractor, probe the berries, walk the grass, what's behind the pile. Uh, get some situational awareness of where you're working before you sort of launch in there. Uh, I have some personal experiences of um, operating pretty close to the river bank with a dramatic uh, drop off, backing up my tractor to set the flail down and realizing that I was right on the edge of literally backing the tractor off a 10 foot cliff into the water. Once you're familiar with uh, where you're operating, then commence your, your mowing or your, your loader work. Uh, this is also common sense when running a, like a lawn mower. At my house, you're, you're picking up Nerf guns and dog bones and tennis balls, and that's all stuff that, in a best case scenario, just shoots out the side, uh, and, and, and in other scenarios, does damage to your machine. So look before you go, and take a hike. Get to know what you're working around. Another common uh, safety consideration is uh, load balancing. I believe we have a, a video about that already, but just be conscious of 
of what are your loads doing in the front, what are your loads doing in the back, are you properly ballasted. Uh, sometimes it's as simple as just hooking up a box blade or an, ex an existing implement you already have, like a tiller perhaps, if you know you're going to be doing heavy loader work. Along those lines, think about the slopes and the terrain that you're on. Uh, the center of gravity, uh, gravity is your friend, and having a low center of gravity is a way to, uh, to make sure the tractor is as safe as possible. So how do we lower the center of gravity? Well, we keep everything as low as possible, or we add weight. Uh, adding weight to the machine in and of itself will help keep it uh, affixed to the ground. One of the scenarios that is a little bit, um, that might get you is if you're, you're working on a hillside and you've got a lot of uh, weight in the loader and you're backing down and then you start your turn and there's some momentum which could try and swing the tractor down. Uh, just, just go slow and, and keep that situational awareness up and if it, if it feels weird, it feels off, you're uncertain, don't do it. This is especially true with some of our smaller tractors like the One Series. Uh, they have big buckets on them that kind of bite off more than they can chew. There's lots of stories on the web and YouTube of folks uh, getting in trouble, uh, especially with the One Series. So if you're considering buying a One Series and really any tractor, have a conversation with your salesperson about proper ballast. Tractors have some moving parts, especially the PTO. There, is, uh, there are some safety precautions built into the driveline of the PTO that prevent people from uh, loose clothing or tripping and falling and getting tangled up in that PTO. And perhaps we'll have another video about how to set that up. But watch for moving parts, uh, especially uh, when you have a rear implement. The temptation is when you need to hop off the tractor and do something is to leave the PTO running. You really need to shut it down. Uh, some people even have a, a rule where they won't, they won't get off the tractor unless it's actually turned off. The next thing is fire danger. We live in the West. It's increasingly uh, an issue and your machine can be a real fire hazard, especially in the dry season, which is usually September, uh, October. How is a tractor a fire danger or fire hazard? Well, exhaust for one, having, if you have a, uh, some tractors have a downflow exhaust and those hot exhaust gases can ignite uh, tall flashy fuels like um, yeah, tall grass, that kind of thing. Or if you're running a, a cutter, a tiller, a flail, uh, sparks from the implement igniting a fire. And uh, there's been a handful of times I've been running my flail in the, in the dusk and I, that thing shoots out sparks from hitting a rock or um, a piece of metal or getting wire tied up in it, throwing all kinds of sparks. So be conscious of uh, fire danger. A tip with that is, as many of you know, is there's fire restrictions. So consult your local fire jurisdiction. Uh, in Douglas County, it's uh, ODFW, and they do a pretty good job of disseminating when it's safe to mow and run your equipment. The last thing I have is, is park it right. When you're done for the day, um, and this is pretty common sense, but if you're a new tractor owner, might not be intuitive, uh, lower the hydraulics, take the pressure off of everything. Uh, if you got something heavy on the back, move that hitch lever, lower whatever's on the back, and make sure that the loader is down. You can even cycle the joystick to bleed off any pressure. Uh, hop off the tractor. Did you set the parking brake? Do that. Um, and again, be mindful of who's, who's around the machine. I have small children, and um, one of them in particular is particularly affectionate with the tractor and he's actually, he scares me because uh, how, how much he wants to be around it. And something as simple as is not having an implement set all the way down uh, can be pretty significant. The other thing is, is that stuff shifts over time, stuff rolls, things pop out of gear. Um, so just, again, be super conscious, set your parking brake if you need to, chalk your wheels, lots of, lots of considerations like that. I feel like a parent kind of uh, harping on all this. Um, it's just, when you look at the statistics, uh, farming, which is a, in a professional context, is in the top 10, if not the top five most dangerous professions in the United States. Next to logging, commercial pilots, commercial fishermen, and I think construction workers. So uh, there's, there's real hazards, and um, just because you're not a professional farmer, doesn't mean that those hazards have gone away with a small tractor. So I hope you find that helpful. Um, 
comment below. Uh, what tips do you have? What lessons have you learned? And um, I um, always enjoy learning from our viewers. Thanks for paying attention. Thanks for, for clicking on this video, which is um, not always maybe the most sensational topic, but surely uh, important. My name's Nathan, and this is Toolkit with Pape Machinery.